And if this comes out and this launches, this becomes a real boy, the Steam top sellers list is going to get unhinged, kids. Oh, yeah. Hey, everyone. Welcome back to Linux Gamecast Weekly. The show covers the latest Linux gaming news, reviews, how to's, and most importantly, whatever the hell else we come up with. And then, that's Jordan. Pedro's dead. As it happens every now and then. I know. We, we've been holding the uh, pre-show eulogy. Talking about Marvel movies, yeah. I, I, I attempted to play Amazing Grace. I was booed off stage. I want to play bagpipes. I don't think I've ever really tried to play. I've never... Uh, bagpipes is not one of those things you have re- regular access to, but okay. Yeah. Well, it's, 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 it's weird because, like, you're not playing it by blowing it. You're, infl- you're inflating the bag by blowing into it, and you're squeezing it to, like, actually make the sound. <sighs> you see, here's the problem, though. Once you get the bagpipes, then you're going to be tempted to get a unicycle, and it's downhill from there. No, then you just start playing ACDC songs nonstop. <laughs> You're in the shower. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> Jordan, you have a problem. You need to take away these. You need to <laughs> stop playing these bagpipes. You can take them out of my cold dead head. Oh, man. Uh, speaking of cold dead heads, together with you, Shot Realm Dynamic, watching us live on YouTube and Twitch. And I don't I have no idea, but we are on Facebook, technically helping us for him. Cocaine. Jill, Jill says we're Voltron. live on Facebook. She has we no are. reason to lie, right? It works, right? man. It works. Jordan, I, I bought some junk food this week. What would you? What did you buy? Like, I bought an Amy's uh, Pizza, Jordan. Okay. You know what an Amy's Pizza is? Some kind of vegan pizza. It's some like, bullshit moon hippie junk food, right? It, it, it's a pizza. I, I've, I've, I've heard you mention these before. They're like yeah. your 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 special pizza time. Hippie snacks. And uh, I bought one. I'm like, it's been, been forever since I even had any bread. And I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to get one. Why not? All the cooking instructions are lies, man. Preheat the oven. I'm like, okay, we're good. Like, how long? 30 minutes. They're, they're, they're frozen, right? Frozen? It, yeah. Just regular frozen pizzas, but, you know, with moonbeams and crap on them. And uh, I'm like, okay, preheat, wait, put it in, boom. Set a timer. I should have listened to it. My gut feeling. That smell in the house when you're cooking a pizza. You're like... That's done. It, it, it smells about right. And I'm like, what's the timer say? Timer says I got another nine minutes on this thing. Oh. I'll give it nine minutes. Like three minutes after that, I'm like, you know what? I need to go check on it. It was almost a block of carbon, man. Mm. Yeah. Throw it away. Hell no, those things are expensive. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> it wasn't try, it w- try try and salvage it. It was it, it wasn't that bad. Here's a, it was bad enough to where when I was trying to cut up with the pizza cutter, I'm like, did I leave the cardboard on the bottom? <laughs> we got through it. It was a very crunchy, crunchy pizza. But another thing that was very exciting that showed up this week, if you follow me in our Discord, which you don't have to follow me in our Discord, we're just there, you gotta deal with it. Or on the social media, I got the first Firewire audio interface ever made in the world. Mm, antique. Dude, uh, kind of. When do you think that was made? Hmm? I don't know when Fire... I, I don't know if him when Firewire came out. So I'm going to say 93? Oh, 93, huh? How do I get my profile thing on Zitter? I'm trying to get to it. I think the, you click on your face. Uh, oh. possibly. There it is. That's it. That's the Motu 828. Master of the Universe 828. Yeah, Mark of the Unicorn, baby. Um, 2001. 2000? Okay. A lot later than I thought. Because I'm like, was Firewire an 80 thing, 80s thing? I know it was a 90s thing, but I don't know. It was. Like, the standard was ratified in 1995, I believe. Okay. And, you know, then it was either by Apple, then it was picked up, then... Typically, you saw FireWire for digital video mm. cameras and hard drives. Why? Because USB 2 was and still is an absolute dumpster fire for communications. Mm. And uh, it basically is better than USB 2 even today in every conceivable way, shape, form, and fashion, period, across the board. But, but, can, but is, does it have the super positioned connector where you have to rotate it three times before it finally goes no, in? No, but it's got a flat spot on the connector. So it, could, it goes in the first time. It's got a flat spot on the connector so you can, A, very clearly see where you plug it in. B, 
You can get the old reach around where you can't see and be like, oh, right, this side, this side, got it. Yes. Plug it in. However, later on, I did notice on the back of this, there was not the sticker. Like, do not plug in upside down, which would leave, lead you to believe, like, how? And I'm like, Jordan, you're right. You can do it once. Yeah. <laughs> and usually the, with the uh, dice chip set, this is a common problem, believe it or not, for like FireWire devices. It'll immediately smoke the FireWire controller. So this isn't, it's not in the chain right now. You just have it set up. No, no, it's rough. sitting back here in the rack. Uh, it's undergoing, you know, just the basic test. Cause I, I want to do like a little history on fireware, but hmm. I've been looking for one of these at, you know, a good price. That's in good shape. And this thing's mint and uh, spoilers. It does a little dance when you cut it on. Oh. I'm a sucker for that. Any type of electronic device with a bunch of LEDs on it. If you give me a little bit of a show. I'm like, yeah, I'm like, oh, oh, that's cool. Somebody, because I know some thought went into that, right? I'm like, yeah, okay, a little bit of presentation. Runs through the, the, the meter and then back, and you're like, mm-hmm. ah, that's neat. Like, pretty cool. So Good stay shots. tuned for that. Also, uh, if you are a patron, if you're one of the beautiful party people making this possible, uh, there is the, how do you do production audio, pro audio under Linux? Would that be involved? Currently, that video is up and running. I've made some modifications to it, but one thing I like to do, for our patrons is to put that out give you an early look at it if you see anything like hey maybe consider including this or mm, whatever that's the time to do it but that information is available i'll have that out this wednesday with a full written guide if you've ever been curious how we stick the stuff together in the studio do the processing and the time constraints you know jordan's even got a baby version of this setup at his house yes uh, there are there are three less computers involved <laughs> To do the real time audio also processing don't have to host that we do. up to four people. So no, uh, you, but you could. I could. I yes. could be like Jordan. Replicate this. You could math it out. Yeah, like, yeah. You can get the basic idea. Realize how uh, what, what, now would my ADD ass like switch it as well as you? Hell no. It would be like we'd we'd be like an entire podcast on like Ven's eye for like two hours. Oh man, dang it! Do you know what I should have done? Oh, I hate man. this. I, I should have kept three shot because I saved the video of the toothbrush zoom. Uh, that should have been in loop the entire. And never addressed it. How about you, Jordan Swag? Have you burnt any pizzas or uh, bought any audio interfaces from 2001 this week? I have done neither of those things, although now I really want a pizza. I might order one depending. After, uh, I, I don't know. That used to well, be a little well, bit well, of well, a well, tradition well, when you were in the city. Like, a little, a little, a little bit. Two o'clock. Yeah. Time for some takeout. Oh, but it was, it was the, the Popeyes was right downstairs. It was great. You just get fried chicken right after the show. It was amazing. Mwah. Not doing that shit anymore. Lost, lost sixty pounds because of it. Um, but yeah, I, uh, I got, uh, I, I finally bit the bullet, bought that uh, seventy eight hundred XT Power Color. Traitor! Ah, ah, I know. Team That's Green. Ah. Yeah, and like. I was for a while. I was on the fence about like, do I want the forty seventy? Do I want the seventy eight hundred? And after thinking about it, it's like it is literally a hundred dollars more for a worse card if I went with the forty seventy. So and that this yeah. is before or after that you worked out that uh, coming to America to purchase it and smuggling it back in wouldn't be financially uh, viable. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I also I also did that as well. Um, Allegedly. A, 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 a legend. Well, I, I didn't well, you actually didn't do, do it. I, but, I, I, hey, man, listen. I, 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 I thought about it. I, I, I don't want you to I, get picked I, up on a Canadian thought crime, homie. I committed the thought crime, and now the fucking thought police are coming. The the the, the brain mounties are riding <laughs> on their their giant brain horses. I don't. It's like the <laughs> they're, they're, they're the guys. Are, oh man, is, is that Rick and Morty with the testicles? Uh, the time testicles guys. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. The fucking stuff. Yeah, you fuck with time, motherfucker. <laughs> oh yeah, those guys. No, but uh, yeah, I'm I'm enjoying the card. It installed right out of the box. I upgraded to kernel six six zero, and then the next day, immediately afterwards, like, hey, we released kernel six six one. I'm like, well, I'm not rebuilding my kernel for that. Nah. Not, not for a one point release. Um, but you the plugged it in. Mason. You had to spend all afternoon. Uh, I was oh. watching you in Discord. You were like, you know what? You you were doing the pre-disaster recovery solar job like all right let me just go ahead and deal with all possible contingents what yeah, do i yeah, need yeah. to know well and it, it, it was lucky that like oh fedora 39 is out today okay well now for sure i'm gonna i, I can upgrade and get the latest drivers mm-hmm. and all that crap so yeah i, I do it doing all that stuff instead of like my actual job but um 
Allegedly. Allegedly. But yeah, I, plug, I plugged it in. Uh, worked out of the box. Wayland worked out of the box. Switched over to X. It was very, very painless. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm enjoying the card so far. I ran a bunch of benchmarks and I went, <laughs> GPU go burr. Still can't do cyberpunk, uh, at UHD on ultra, but I can do it on high. I can do it on high and nice. hold, and hold, uh, 90, 90 furps, which is pretty fucking dope. Um, ray tracing. I can do 60, uh, on cyberpunk at RT low. And I finally broke 50 frames a second on quick to RTX. Oh my God. I'm so excited. Uh, honestly, I bought it for the rasterization performance. Cyberpunk runs great on it. I'm looking forward to uh, getting into uh, Control and uh, Ask Creed Valhalla because those were the DX12 games I had that were not running very I well. I will recommend Control. API. Yeah. Having played both, I will recommend Control. And uh, mm-hmm. see, see how long you can play the, um, Valhalla until you just get bored with it. Like, it's not yeah, necessarily, uh, it's just too much game. Yeah, well, that, and, and that's that's kind of what I saw with it. It's like that, it's that Ask Creed sort of like well, all the side quests you got to do them all, or and we're gonna get your numbers so that you got to do them all, or else you can't right. fucking complete the game. But I saw uh, when the card showed up. I think it might have been later that night. Uh, you were posting in our Discord if you're a Twitch sub or a patron. Uh, connect, come hop in our Discord. Uh, but you you posted. Uh, I believe it was um, Cyberpunk. That I'm like, hold, wait for it. Wait for it. Then we got the Talos benchmark. Well, it's, I, as is tradition, right? I'm like, oh. I mean, I'm, the Talos I'm principle. I'm sorry. That was like, a legitimate slip. But yeah, the yeah. Talos benchmark. Yeah. Well, see, I had, I had to remember to install the Talos principle. That, mm-hmm. was, that was the other thing. Because, mm. you know, you only install it when you buy new hardware. So you I, I, yeah, with, with our group, especially with like, since it works with Vulcan, I have probably 100 hours into Talos principle and I've played the game maybe 70 minutes. Hmm. You know, um, but speaking of benchmarks, stay tuned because we get some big news on that front. But first, we need to talk about what has been going on in the world of the steamy stuff with the yes. horses or something. There, 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 there's a horse. It's, it's an old horse back from 1998. It's got an update. It looks extra pixely. It's the Steam it's Linux update, update of the week. week. Right. There's not a third Again, person I don't here. know. How do we do that? Yeah. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah. Hey. So Half Life Four is confirmed. Done. PC Games End has cover- broke the story. Um. There's an update. Uh. For the 25th anniversary of Half Life, we are seeing some movement in the uh, Steam DB. Uh. For Half Life One. And there's a lot of speculation as to what it could be. Could it be RTX Half Life? Could it be Gord Long Lost DLC being added? Are they adding the two-player uh, co-op from the PlayStation version of Half-Life to the game? No, we, we, we don't know, but it seems like most likely it's going to be Steam Deck support. Which, you know, I get, you know get, getting the old Gold Source games back uh, backported to have like good deck compatibility is a good way to extend your back catalog. And like, honestly, you got to figure, you could probably get like some good battery life off the Steam Deck on, mm. on Half-Life 1, right? Like, Impossible. it's not that demanding a game. Yeah. Mm. Around power in 10 minutes. Yeah, well, that's, that's, that's why you need uh, some sort of advanced display, but we'll, we'll, we'll get to that. Spoilers, man. Yeah, password-protected updates always gets uh, the uh, SteamDB junkies, like, spinning around, and then it's fun to theorize, especially with Half-Life. Coming up, November 19th, 1998, that's when we got to Half-Life, and I just noticed that there's 557 people in-game right now playing Half-Life. Good on every single one of you, and this is the original Half-Life, not Black Mesa. My first thought was, however, oh, okay, we're going to get a remaster from Valve. Then I remembered a blessed project, which we've all played, Black Mesa, which is, I, I don't see Valve taking another crack at that. I'm like, maybe they're going to move it to Source 2. No, no, I, I don't think that's it. But what Jordan was saying, Steam Deck, that, that, that's too obvious and it's too boring, so it's probably the right answer to that, right? Yeah, the, the the only other times we see updates in these depots is for, like, security issues, where they're like, oh, yeah, there's, like, a massive remote code execution bug that we needed to plug in, like, the game server. That was mm-hmm. the last thing we got for, like, Day of Defeat, I think. I, I think that was actually the last for Gold Source. Stuff. What if we got Half-Life 1 Episode 2? Uh, maybe, maybe. How do you even do that? I don't well, know. Well, that's, that's, that's Blue Shift in Opposing Force, actually. Do you mm. think about it? Okay. The, the, yeah, it's kind of, kind of the expansion. There's a time-honored tradition over the last decade of us saying shit on this show and things happening. Yeah. Remember I, our I, conversation I about playing as a headcrab? Yeah. 
I, I'm pretty sure that the end of Half-Life 5, though, involves you getting on a tram that takes you to the beginning of Half-Life 1. Because it's, it's, like, it's like the Dark Tower, right? It's just a fucking time loop. I guess, spoilers for the Dark Tower. No, I want crabs with goatees. Oh, crabs with goatees and guns. Oh, man. Maybe you play some games that you don't want your coworkers, your friends, and your family, significant other uh, alternate personalities to know about. I play a lot of Fortnite, yeah. Fortnite, Call of Duty, you know, I mean, uh, FIFA, sports ball manager, insert Kurt here. Yeah. Yeah, you just don't want your friends to know that you're uh, into that. Not an easy thing to deal with on Steam. You got to make sure that you're locked out, the friends list, and you don't want that slip. You don't want to see people knowing that you're playing the Call of Duty Bros, Too Spooky for You edition. Well, Valve is going to make that just a little more easy for you. They might be adding the ability for you to hide those embarrassing games. Market is private. Certain games, not going to see it on the timeline. We're not going to see, uh, oh, I don't know. Wait, is there any game that you'd be embarrassed about that you have uh, that, that that I that I own? No. Um, there, there. Honestly, though, there there have been certain games that I've been curious enough to like, or I've, I've been curious like, uh, you know, you know, you know, maybe maybe may, may, maybe one day I'll like create a Spurf account to to look at it. Um, but at the same at the same time, though, it's like, uh, I I I don't know. If if I don't want people to see me playing a game, mm-hmm. I can just go offline on Steam. Or I, but because like let, let's let's be real, this is for porn games. Like this is this is if you if you have like Tentacle Dungeon Master twelve and you don't want people to know that you suck. No, like Tentacle Dungeon hours Master it, sold out at ten, dude. Like nobody's playing twelve. Uh, yeah, well, l- l- listen. After they they added a bunch of microtransactions, mm-hmm. there are whales that are still playing Tentacle <laughs> Master Dungeon. Um, and they, they, they are trapped in an abusive relationship. I, I mean, monster. yeah, uh, 10 still on the classic server, so you don't have to deal with the new stuff, right? Although, yeah. And they have like band servers for nine <laughs> and stuff. No, but yeah. Uh, but uh, there, there, there are a lot of saucy games on steam. There's a lot of like, uh, hentai games on steam and like, even, even then there's just a lot of games that cover, um, subject matter that you may not necessarily want to have people in your social circle be apprised that you're into. Um, Certainly for like cultural religious reasons. Power uh, washing like, simulator. Does it work for family sharing though? If <laughs> if 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 I if I, if I share my family games with with people, do they do they do does little Timmy have to see my fucking hentai games? Can I get the inverse option of this where I can just put this shit in like bold and make it blink and have yeah, glitter around it? Yeah, everyone gets alerted when you play when yeah. you play hentai simulator. Let me go for yeah. that because uh, I've absolutely just accumulated a friends list on Steam over the years of people full of zero fucks given man i'm like oh they're playing that that's game ha huh. mm-hmm. and um but like i said man like if you want to hide the stuff that you're doing and that's concerned i was reading uh i forget if it was on reddit hacker news or wherever i originally got this um somebody had mentioned that the reason they needed it is because like i'm friends with my employees yeah um my, my boss is on my friends list right like yeah there, there's probably some stuff that like i would not like to have that workplace conversation with them about mm-hmm. yeah the, the, i mean it, it, it seems like it's a good privacy measure because like the, the the shotgun approach of all or nothing isn't great and just having a little tick box that says like hey don't share my details about this case. but everybody i want you to think about this the steam if this comes out and this launches this is, becomes a real boy the steam top sellers list is gonna get unhinged kids Oh yeah, oh yeah, because like it's because like no like who gloves are playing are these games? Everyone is or playing maybe these the games, are but back no one's on, admitting to playing yeah. these games. Yeah, because uh, seriously, like how many games are going to like just straight up horny games are going to be? I, I minimum one. I think one's a hundred percent chance, but I'm, I'm saying two, possibly three. We'll see. I, yeah, I, I, th- I think it's going to be like a recurring like joke news segment of like, hey, look what got to the top of the Steam sellers this week. I wonder what kind of weird shit people are into this month. Right. Um, and more power to you, man. Enjoy it. I, yeah. I had to. There's a couple of filters. They're, they're better than what they used to be because of, initially in the show notes uh, earlier this week, I had put down um, like I would just like itty horny game. It like doesn't matter if it has contains horny. Uh, just to get a block filter and like just have a single checkbox because the on Valve on Steam, I guess I should say it wasn't that straightforward of like it wouldn't get enough of them. You still had to filter it out. And like I'm I'm looking for stuff like to play on stream and things like that. Like I don't judge whatever you do you. 
However, you can go, but there's like three levels of horny filter. There's three horny checkboxes you got to get on. And it gets about 98% of them. There's still some visual novel that you look at and you're like, oh, we both know what's going on there, man. I'm not, yeah. Oh, uh, there you go. I, I don't have anything that I'd even think about hiding. I never yeah, give it a like, thought. But like, I, I, can, I can certainly understand why you would. Absolutely. Yeah. Like, it's not going to hurt anybody to have the option. Indeed. But they're just going to look over your shoulder while you're on the bus and watch you play it anyway. On, on your Steam Deck, yeah. Yeah. Uh, what, what is causing me pain, though, is Valve released a new piece of hardware that is better than my current piece of hardware, and now I'm less sad. Oh, don't be sad. Be happy. <laughs> See, right. there we go. Introducing, ladies and gentlemen, this is kind of the big news of the week. Uh, the new Steam Deck OLED version. That's right. High dynamic range screen, longer lasting battery, faster downloads, and so much more, Jordan. Yeah, they're, they're, I mean, I mean, they're, there's there's a little bit. Uh, it's, it's it's a bit lighter. The um, they got that Wi-Fi chip that we were talking about. They they tried to sneak that patent through, but we we caught it. That's what this is for. This, this is uh, this is what everybody's going to want to know. We got to choose yeah. our decks. Choose our decks. Uh, yep. okay. Mm. Here's how it works. Mm. The original. It's still there. You got one LCD option. It's still around, but it's got a storage bump, 256 gigajoules, 399, which is a price drop when you factor in the storage. The new OLED starts at 512 at 549 wet stinky caches, and it's coming soon. And by soon, they mean November 16th, 10 a.m. Yeah, so specific. Right. And there's also a one terabyte OLED version mm. for only 649, which is not that bad. No, but it's wait, not, it's not Lenovo pricing for that storage. There's more, Jordan. There's the YOLO deck, the limited edition for $6.79. It, it looks pretty dope, though. I, I'm, I'm a big fan of like the transparent plastic thing that like the old N64 controllers and the old Game Boys had. So this, this has that. Allegedly, there's a picture of it somewhere. It's behind the image. Right. Allegedly. Yeah, uh, it, yeah it's got some orange, red orange highlights, a semi transparent case. So what do we really get if we're going to do a. Uh, deck facts real quick mm. so the 64 and 512 what i said led models they're gone battery's a little bit bigger got 10 extra watt hours uh, wi-fi 6 e no shrink on the apu it's not faster air quotes but it went from seven nanometers down to six which is good the, the screen the GPU has an improvement as well but i think it's also like a die shrink thing uh, uh the screen outside of being oled is also 90 hertz now Mm-hmm. So you're not going to get like variable um, rate on it, but having that 90 option is pretty dope. High performance touch for the screen for whatever the hell that means. You don't have to use two sausages to make the touch screen work anymore. And it's no. also a little bit lighter though. 640 grams versus 669. And just because of Al's feeling generous and probably because nobody bought the damn things, the deck docks are $20 off. Yeah. Like on- honestly, there are a lot of third party deck docks on Amazon that are like, Cheap deck docs and, yeah deck docs you know follow me on deck doc uh yeah so it seems like they're keeping to their word about maintaining that consistent performance profile they could have made the gpu cpu a little bit faster i think that the gpu has like a higher dynamic clock so it can burst a little higher um but yeah have, having that consistent hardware target means that um means that the developers have a you know a, a thing to target it's mm-hmm. not like every, every oh, it's gonna be a little bit though. faster but valve's not gonna be like bit. it's it's the same thing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's got a better cooling system. It's on a smaller node, less heat, better turbo boost. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it, it, it's, it's going to be like marginally faster in like one nope, or two uses. It'll crush a 4090. Absolutely. Um, there, the hardware compatibility, though, a lot of us were looking at like, oh, can we stuff the OLED screen in the old decks? Apparently not. Give me apparently some tape. The, apparently the guts are a little different, which is unfortunate. But we have seen that uh, some folks are making aftermarket. Um, like components for the Steam Deck. So maybe we'll see some aftermarket stuff that could bridge the gap between the deck. I've I've seen that. And if you look at like any of the screen replacement stuff, dude, it's like, oh, follow these simple 83 steps. Oh yeah. Well, yeah, you got to like extract the entire thing and like disconnect the motherboard. It's a pain in the ass, but you can do it. Um, so yeah, I, I, honestly, I think it's a good thing. Uh, battery life has kind of been battery life and heat has been the big complaint. So having something that addresses that is going to, is going to be good. And like between the, between the die shrink, the better screen, the better uh, Wi-Fi chip. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We could probably see a lot better, uh, better battery games. Several there. outlets get their hands on them and like are legitimately seeing like, 
45 percent increase in battery life which is pretty good yeah. like like considering that was like two hours like going, what, going up to like three and a half that's that's way better ladies and gentlemen what you're looking at here is what i'd love something i'm going to call steam deck 1.0 thank you for beta testing because yeah. this reads like a checklist of like everyone had some problems with this and they've updated some of the board layouts for like the shoulder buttons mm -hmm. simplified things clean things up put some polish on it and yeah this is steam deck 1.0 and it looks like a really well-made solid piece of kit like if you're looking for a steam deck now if you still got the vintage if you get the old lcd one that's fine nobody's gonna make fun of you I, I, I feel like less of a man. I, I feel like, uh, like a little, little deflated. I mean, you're going to look at it and go, you're, you're vintage now, little buddy. Don't worry yeah. about it. You're completely unusable. Garbage. Just fucking huck it into the trash. <laughs> what do you... Oh, man. Um, I wonder what this is going to do for uh, eBay. Use tax. Because... You know, we got the Steam Deck refurb program, right? And we yeah. should point out that, yeah, you can buy the LCDs, the previous, there's some price cuts right now while supplies last, but there's also the refurb program, mm -hmm. which Whoa. decimate, decimated the um, prices for anybody who was trying to scalp them or just try to sell their old decks. Like, they, you know, they're basically like, you got to sell it less than you can get a certified refurb with a warranty. Um, mm. I wonder wait, what... Wait, wait. Which Is hopefully it, means that like more decks will be on the market. Like people are gonna want to upgrade to the new version, and like it'll make it more accessible. That means more Linux computers out there. How much? <sighs> two hundred, two hundred bucks for a vintage deck. Vintage, three hundred, three hundred Canadian maybe. Okay, we're gonna we're, we're gonna do this live, kids. Um, well, well, are you asking how much it is or how much I would? How pay? much it's sold for? How much it's sold? For? Latest okay. one. Most reasonably priced one. So, uh, condition 300 ish. Yeah. Buying formats, re return, more filters. Wait, no, they're just sold items. Damn it. Cancel. Let's see. 539. 512, 339. 350. 350. 350. That's for the 512. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. Do they got a 256, 317? Okay, yeah. Okay, so I'm, I'm I'm not I'm not that far off. No, like still 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 higher than I would have thought. Considering you know, again, refurb. You can get one that was like QA again, you know? yeah. And all of these are vintage decks now, so they're they're gonna have to. It's a collector's item. Shave off another hundred bucks on these, man. We're we're looking at like instead of three ninety, you're gonna be looking at two ninety. A, a one terabyte Steam Deck with a four hundred gig SSD. That what? What? I know computer stuff. Shut up. <laughs> okay. Um, I don't know, man. That, 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 that was an adventure. Now, both but, of us avoided this. Uh, we got a couple of game updates, and this is less of an update and more of a, hey, this is, this is kind of what happened behind... Um, do, you, do you think do you think the Steam Deck can run Skitty, City Skylines, too? Skitty Skylines, like, probably. Skitty Skylines? City Skylines, man. Uh, somebody has broke down. This is blog.pavo.me. All this is going to be in our show notes after the fact. But if you're wondering why your uh, Skyline experience was so slow, this guy breaks it down exhaustively, and I'm just very happy to see this. Um, at the end of the day, you can blame it on dots, the Unity dots. And not, there, wacko, not Yakko Wacko? No, um, not at all. Be quiet, Pinky. Unity's integration between dots, like dots was like a big thing earlier, like I think last year, and they just never like closed on it uh, with the dots and high definition render pipeline, the HDPR. It's kind of still a work in progress. So that's probably why they had to do their own calling implementation for City Skylines, which is not always it's something you want to roll your own. Um, then we got other things they bring up. Like there's issues with like a pile of logs having over 100,000 vertices. That's not something that should have made it the production build. That's Somebody being given a budget on the art department, like, here, here's some logs. And like, okay, we'll clean that up before we ship it. Didn't happen. There's also so, teeth. They're, they're, they're rendering teeth at maximum yes. quality every time that there, there's, a, there's two fees on screen. Yeah, and a, a lot of it is just like, yeah, the, the, the automatic, like, object population system seems to, like, not, not really care about what actually needs to be there at a given scale level and just kind of does everything. Um, which seems to be causing a lot of the, a lot of the slowdown. 
Um, Moral of this story is they knew this was going to be a shit show when they were shipping it. They 100% did because like Unity's got a profiler in it, just built-in profiler for your render docs and insights. Like this is going to tell you what's happening, where the hangups are, where all the times being chewed up. They knew. Yeah. When uh, this apparently thing- there was some uh, some work getting uh, this to hook in past the launcher though. <laughs> that was that was the first part of this blog post. It got shipped. We don't know why. If they had uh, deadlines, they had to meet. Or however, that went down. They got it out the door. Now. Nothing in here is unfixable at all, not even remotely. Everything here is like, we can fix this with dev hours. Not a problem. But you got to think, like, Paradox is sitting there going, the crackheads that play this game, as long as they can launch it and get in, they're going to play it. Now, for the rest of you, people like me and Jordan, who are never going to play it. Well, we're bad examples, so don't use us. But for the other type of people who are like, hmm, that looks kind of it. Give this game about six to eight months. Then maybe think or, about it. Or, or maybe the modders will fix it. Maybe they'll they'll figure some shit out. Really? I don't know. Maybe. We 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 we've seen we've seen mods fix performance issues before. Yeah. So, I mean some some someone someone's already done the, the legwork of Is there gonna uh, be a dentist mod? What? A dentist mod? Absolutely. It's, it just turns everything into teeth. Just gum the, building, yeah. the buildings are just made out of teeth, the roads, teeth. There's people. gonna be teeth all over the roads. Just all teeth. Beautiful. Orbital Scrabbage. Scrabbage? Yeah. Scrabbage. Scrabbage. It has an update. Uh, took me a second because we did throw chairs at this back in the day. This was back on LGC episode 552, not too long ago. Um, this was a roguelike where you collect uh, various bits and bobs, attach them to your limbs, and go through various obstacles And in a bullet hell type game. They have a new update uh, that basically brings in some new enemies, new weapons, and a secret level. Um, there's also some game direction markers as well, so you can find out where you're going. Because every level is kind of like a maze where you need to like find the find the exit. So you know, providing some insight into where the hell you actually need to go, very useful. Because I remember getting lost in that a couple times. Um, it still looks like a janky Unity asset flip that we all know and love, but at least work's being put into it. Um, there's the, there's the Bullet Hell Fest coming up, and I think that is what um, uh, that is what spurred a lot of the work being done on uh, this game. You know. <laughs> I share the same thoughts on that. Um, yeah, this is one of the nice things about all of the insert the random whatever fest we're having this week or next week or the week after that. This is not the first time we've seen it, but it does encourage developers to go back and revisit games that might otherwise never received an update. Why? Because sales. Update yeah. some things, get a nice little bump. It's coming out with a bullet fest or whatever fest. Bullet heaven. Yeah. Silly as that is, man. Uh, yeah, this is... I mean, as far as the game itself, I remember playing it. This is the that game, everybody's first game, top down, uh, aim with your mouse, run around and shoot stuff. I didn't find it doing anything for me personally, but eh, I'm glad we got an update for it. Like, if it's your jam. Yeah. No, yeah. It's, 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 it's good to see. Again, like, you, you think it's just a, it's just an asset flip, but like, people, they're still, they're still working on it. So it's good to see. I mean, uh, you know, asset flips work. There, I, I mean, one, 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 one I, I think they're, they're, they have a bit of a bad reputation, but like you can make a good game that's an asset flip. Uh, but like it, it, I it's wouldn't call not, it's, uh, it's, using nothing but like stock assets that you bought off the store. I don't think qualifies something as an asset flip. No, well, no, like just that, taking like a pre programmed like little engine or something like that, like where it's everything's already defined, like a town or a scene, then with the assets and just selling that directly, I would call an asset flip. Okay, you get what I'm saying. I I I I, I see I see what you mean. I I it, I don't know. In, if you replace mind, all of your, sort of... you design a game and you replace all your programmer art with purchased art, I wouldn't call that an asset flip. No, Just that's not that's, that that that's that's certainly not an asset flip. But I I, I would I, typically in my, in my mind at least I define it as like you used a lot you used a lot of canned assets. There there isn't a lot of original ones. Um, but that but again that doesn't necessarily like mi- indicate like the level of quality of the gameplay itself. It just means that like you used a lot of assets and you just used mm. a lot of canned assets and then you, you shipped it without replacing them. You what does asset flip mean to you? Let us know in the comments. Like yeah. for me, for a long time, there was a problem. There was a, like that 3d Minecraft block shooter that people were just buying whole hog off the unity store and posting it to steam. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. Like to me, that is my category. Let us know what you think in the mm. comments. Now, Jordan, do you like collecting old GPUs? Uh, I don't like collecting them. I, I happen to have a collection, but that is just because... How I many do you have? Right now? Yeah. I guess 
one 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 I got by by definition one of them maybe maybe several of them because a couple of APUs in, no, in no, this how, how many vintage. discrete GPUs could you lay your hands on if I gave you five minutes? Zero, because I'd have to power down computers and pull them out. Oh, you don't I, have well, any. Well, if, if I didn't care about the computer, four, four. If I if I if I just ripped them out of the mobos, yeah. I say this because I have a nothing but a nothing but discrete GPUs in filling an entire drawer. Hmm. And here in the studio, and I mean, it's. I've thought about like stacking them on the walls, man. Doing a little coffee table display or whatever, or something like that, man. Because it, I think I got like two ATI. I don't even have any AMDs. There's just ATI cards and like mm. seven Fire or eight program. NVIDIA cards. Like we're going all the way back to AGP stuff. Mm. I don't think I have any AGP cards still around. I got AGP. I got. Uh, I think PCI? I have a PCI. I think. I'm not 100% on that, but then everything has PCI Express going, basically yeah. everything NVIDIA is made up to the 3070, 3060. I, I wish it was a 7. No, I don't, because I wouldn't have enough memory RAM. Anyway, we're on this topic, because everybody's favorite Linux-loving miscreants, AMD, are noping support for your antique Vega. Aww. Vega and Polaris. Um, any, anything that's using uh, the latter uh, GCN architecture is getting the boot from AMD VLK, which is not the open source drivers. This is their, or not, not the open source drivers you might think of. This is AMD's proprietary open source driver um, that, that only is supported on Debian and Red Hat Linux, or Ubuntu and Red Hat Linux, I should say. Um, yeah, so they're, they're saying that uh, Polaris and uh, Vega are- I love this handy infographic. So if you want to rip off your yes. cooler and have an electron microscope, you can cl- easily distinguish. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, you just have one handy. It's, but yeah. I have it by the microwave. Yeah. Um, yeah. But uh, so uh, th- they consider these, um, these drivers complete and they are not going to be doing anything except pushing out security updates. Now, you might be thinking Vega GPUs. That sounds familiar. That's because if you bought an APU in the past couple of years, you have a Vega GPU that you're probably relying on. So uh, if don't hope, don't think that you're going to be getting any more support from AMD proper. Fortunately, uh, if you're like the rest of us, you're using the Mesa stack using uh, AMD GPU, which is just leaps and bounds better. Uh, And, you know, is actively developed on by Valve. They get fixes very quickly and so on and so forth. Uh, But yeah, just just in case you are on those old prop drivers and you got uh, RX 580 or a 4. Pedro was nice enough to include a list in the show notes, the 470, the 480, the 570, the 580, and the 590, because they are all just the same GPUs binned, plus uh, any of the other mega GPUs. Yeah, switch over to the open source drivers. I think more importantly, more recently, a lot of people might be hit by, um, you got a 5600G? Yeah. Yeah. That, That's that, on that, the list, that, kids. That, that, gets, that gets next. But again... Most of the, most of you are already using Mesa anyways, but there there's some people who are like, no, AMD drivers, they make them, so they must be better. Also, I guess if you need like OpenCL and George, stuff. shut up, man. I am a Linux user tried and true sent for my Windows 11 desktop, but, so this is right. going to affect me gravely. <laughs> um, man, when I was posting those screenshots, I'm like, man, I wish Proton lied about the OS version string, but like, I don't like my benchmark screenshot saying that I'm running Windows 10 Pro, because that's a lie. Yeah. Uh, that yeah, is a lie that Wine tells. The Linux Vega... All the 5,000, 4,000, 3,000, all the G-series APUs and uh, a bunch of mobile stuff that, you know, mm. womp womp. But as Jordan's saying, man, it's not going to affect you on Linux unless you're like, I'd like to run DaVinci Resolve or I need to use, you know, X proprietary piece of software that yeah. requires, um, you know, oh, or, you know, then it will. But, mm. you know, AMD does not have a track history of long live driver support no the, Com- the, yeah yeah like compared to nvidia nvidia's just getting around to like thinking about threatening to get rid of support for 700 series mm-hmm. and that's a decade old card man yeah no i could understand if you're a little miffed especially if you're on windows like i just bought a brand new 5600g yeah it's it, i mean it's not it's not like there's like a fucking Radeon seven or the seven series APUs that you can just go right. and buy. Yeah, if you, if you if you want if you just want a basic computer, yeah, mm-hmm. you're, you're kind of stuck like, with five thousand. Uh, uh, AMD's making this stuff still, man. I'm like, damn, yeah. come on. Then, but, like, yeah, they're, they're, they're still making it. I guess now, now that they finally stopped, they're just like, ah, who needs support? Whatever. I mean, you hate AMD, Jordan. 
I do. I hate you them so Nvidia much shill? because because they didn't hire me when I told them that I used Nvidia graphics cards. Womp womp. Uh, womp womp. But since you do have that brand new uh, super fancy, uh, I, yeah, video card, you, you might need to overclock the snot out of it. I might. Uh, I don't plan on doing it anytime soon. But if I wanted to, I could use Tux Clocker, uh, which now, uh, as of one dot zero dot or 1.3.0 RC1 has the ability to reclock uh, AMD uh, CPUs and GPUs. I tried this one out, and by the way, uh, if you're going to use their pre-built one, the run.sh, make sure you run a sudo command before you run the script, because it will prompt you for your password, and then output a bunch of other shit before you have a chance to actually type it in, which is really annoying. But um, yeah, uh, it has a screenshot. The, the app is very, very simple. It looks pretty much like this. You can double click on any of the values and you get like a little slider or a form field, depending on what you're doing. Um, I will say my one gripe is because I got 12 of these fucking CPUs. If I want to like adjust the frequencies on every on every core, I got to do each one manually. You can't just say like take all of these guys and put them on performance or take all these guys and pin, uh, put the maximum frequency at like 400 megahertz or whatever. It all has to be done one at a time, which is annoying. But I get, imagine once you have that set up, you only you don't really have to do it again. Um, but yeah, uh, th this one, uh, unlike, unlike core control, uh, this one it aims to uh, support any every, anything and everything under the sun. Uh, core control seems to be a little bit more uh, AMD focused. So yeah, if, uh, if you want something that will do all your open source driver clocking stuff, this is the project for you. Can you adjust? Uh, I, I, I don't know. I, I, I slid some sliders around and I was too scared to click apply, so I didn't do it. Why not? I don't want to blow up my computer, man. I just probably just not going to blow it up. But no, knowing my luck, it would explode. Like, like, like in Die Hard Four. It's good to have those options. Uh, now, all we need now does does it work under Wayland? Ah, uh, yes. Okay. Yeah, because it it, uh, it just hooks into the um like the the, the proc shit or whatever um to like set the set the sys CTL values. There you go. I can say words. One thing I'd really like to see with like a AMD open source stack is a unified thing to adjust uh, color. Mm, yeah, like a color color correction thing. Brightness and color, yeah. You don't miss that until you need it one time. And I know you're like, but you can do that with the desktop. And I'm like, I don't want to do that on every desktop I run, man. I don't, I don't, I don't think I want to go through the trouble of color calibrating my monitors because that will ruin me. That would be like, oh well, now all my screens have to have like matching color calibration. Mm -hmm. Damn it. Ah. And yeah, that's, that's just going to ruin my life. That, that. That's you. That's you. I do that. I've been doing that learn, for 30 learn. years, homie. Like, yeah, like learn, learn from your mistakes. Don't do it. Uh, I, I, you know what? I don't necessarily need it, but I like, if it looks like this on this screen, it, I want it to look like this on the screen. I don't want to go like, oh shit. Have I been doing that wrong the entire time? What do I need to do here? So well, yeah, if, if you're doing like video production, yeah, you want to make sure you have color. Or just dragging face. images around. Like, I, I never want that uncertainty. Plus, I want to know it's going to look like, and somebody's like, your color is wrong. I'm like, no, the hell it's not. And plus, it takes five minutes to do. Either way. You, 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 do, you do need to get one of the devices, though, yeah. Yeah, you can get, they're like five bucks used on. All right. Yeah, the, the spiders, it's, there's an entire open source project dedicated to those things is one of those things that somebody buys once and goes, eh. yeah, I, I mean, I don't think it's like a thing you really need to like buy more than one time. It's like, no, you no, do you, the colors change. You, you got to get the spider subscription. You get a new one in the mail. Yeah. Uh, that, 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 you know, Adobe's buying them out. So, you know, oh God, oh, I'm giving God. Them ideas. Yeah. No, no, Adobe would make it a, somebody come to your house and do it for you, man. Oh, you got to pay man. for that. Yeah, uh, they knock up, they knock on your door and you go like, Oh, hi, Mark. Color, oh hi, three D mark. More like it, man. Color accuracy might be very important if you're in the business of taking screenshots of your three D benchmarks, because that's this is big for me. It is. This comes from the guru of three D. Three D mark steel nomad, a non ray tracing benchmark by UL Solutions. And when I say three D mark, when I say three D mark, one of the things I think about is going all the way back. To 2001 because it was a huge deal back in the day tm kids man i mean that 2001 benchmark it had the matrix scene and it had that field with a stream in it with water running down it and the future of 3d was done 
We were good. It didn't get better than that. It was impossible. We were, it was a simpler time, however. But what I want to report is this new one, the latest and greatest, which is going to be the standard from 3D Mark, is coming to Linux. It's not going to be running with Proton or you get to run it through Steam or some hacks or loot. No, no. You just download 3D Mark and you run it on your Linux machine like you would your Windows machine. Um, I think that's pretty dope. And it's also going to be available for iOS, which means the new Macs and uh, Android. Mm -hmm. I think that's pretty cool. Uh, how old were you in 2001? Fuck, I got to do math now. Yep. I was oh, 12. Well, oh yeah, you, you were about a decade. Uh, had you seen The Matrix when you were twelve? When did I see The Matrix? I didn't I, see it when it came out. I saw it like a year. It was before. like ninety nine when it came out. Yeah, so by by two thousand one, I think I probably had seen The Matrix by then. Okay, like that was like the thing that people showed off was it had a recreation of the hallway scene in it. Go look it up mm. on YouTube. It looks so dumpy, so clunky these days, but. That, that, it was a shit back then, man. You brought people over to take a look at it, man. I, we, I, mean, I mean, well, fuck, we were talking about Final Fantasy, the spirits within. I remember seeing that trailer and going, oh my God, this is what CGI looks like now. And then in these days it's like, Haha, it looks like a reboot. It, it kind of does. I remember watching that. Uh, like I said, we were talking about them pre, -pre super shows. And, uh, ordering that pay-per-view to sit down and watch it with somebody. I'm like, this is this far off from indistinguishable from reality, but then again, you go back and rewatch it. You're like, oh, no, yeah, no. Uh, <laughs> I, I, again, our standards were a lot lower mm -hmm. back then. So, yeah. So, I, uh, the latest version of 3D Mark Steel uh, Nomad is going to support DirectX 12 on Windows, uh, Mac OS, and iOS. Uh, it's going to be Metal. Somebody did something with Metal, which is good. But on Linux, we're going to get support for Vulkan, which hey. is also good. Yeah, it's going to be cross platform. You'll be able to do. You know, like I have to do like Apple and wrench comparisons with like, what's the 3D performance of this card versus on Windows 11 versus Linux, at least in the Vulcan field, which is the only thing that matters because DX12 is the future, brah. It's, I mean, it's, it's uh, under Linux land, it's all Vulcan anyways, right? So <laughs> all the way down. Yeah. It's all fucking turtles all the way down. But yeah, no, I mean, and I mean, like, yeah, a, a lot of that is, you know, you, you try Strange Brigade. We were looking at, I, I was looking at stats for Strange Brigade a lot. Because that's a game that uses Vulcan on Windows. And it's like, okay, well, I can expect about, give or plus minus, like, 5, 10% what, 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 I, would, what I would get on, under Windows here um, for, for the Vulcan. For DirectX, it's like, yeah, it's a crapshoot. Because, like, sometimes DXVK is faster, sometimes it's slower. It, it really depends. Mm -hmm. So, ha yeah, having, having that level of consistency there. And I think, yeah, um, get, getting, getting those Steam Deck benchmarks, people are going to be benchmarking their steam decks and all their steam deck mods it's gonna be it's gonna be a weird time for it's gonna be Rice great and handouts. i'm gonna buy a copy of it too. you get my money like mm -hmm. just done okay thank you this is like if you've been hanging out with the linux and the penguins and maybe since the 90s like this this wouldn't even cross your mind this is like the impossible weird reality of like we're getting 3d mark on linux like for reals yeah. not that i followed 3d mark since 2001 but Having that there, I think there's going to be a uh, good knock-on benefits. You know, the wider adoption, and a lot of this has to do with things like Steam Deck. Mm -hmm. Good times. Uh, what do we got? Uh, heroic, heroic 210. Yeah, uh, Heroic, they're chugging along. They have a new version out named Jewelry Bonnie. My understanding is these are all named after, like, One Piece characters, so I'm sure this makes sense in context. But uh, the big thing with this release is they have a fancy schmancy new game scope uh, GUI for you to configure your um, window sizes, your scaling, FPS limiter, all that stuff. They have a screenshot there. Looks nice. Um, Epic logins work now. Hey, Valve. Um, take yeah. note. And again, it's they all this shit. Is in Steam Overlay on the deck. They just need to like bring it over to to fucking yeah, desktop look, land. That's what, that's we're we looking need, at man. we're looking at the settings. It's got Wind, Other, Advanced, Cloud Saves, and Game Scope. Then we got a tick box for enable the upscaling. What type of upscaling do you want? What method? Give it the link. You know, length. Yes, yeah. the length and the width. And uh, pick your full and FPS limit. Like yes, yes. That's that's, that's what we want. That's that's all you want with Game Scope. 
game cope more like game it. cope until, like, man we're just gonna have to listen, game cope I, over here until we get I, this. I need some game cope man dude I, I i just genuinely loathe the process of hey new game i'm gonna play this and i launch it and i'm like oh right i'm gonna need some moon gloves where do you go proton db go through like this, and this. Oh, okay how do i plug that in where do oh, okay you know, you know what Proton TB could really use is just like a um, like a field that says like here's the moon glyphs right at the top, so you don't have to like scroll down to the comments. Just yeah. like for for your best experience, community has agreed on mm. this. This is your command string. Just plug that in. That and would then be you good. could have like a you could have like a Steam Deck plugin, like a Decky plugin, to just pull the, pull those dynamically. Like that would be that would, good. That would be good. Um, awesome. Like you know, I, I'm still grateful that the Steam DB added the system check for leaving reviews. <sighs> That's so good. You're like, this game's horrible. You can't run. Like, what are you running? A Core 2 Duo, NVIDIA 450. I'm like, come on. Of course it doesn't run. Go away. You can download this. It's available for um, everything, man. Yeah. App image, too. So you don't have to worry about yes. anything. You set it up on your deck. No problem. Yeah. This is flat pack. There is an issue with the snap, though. So be uh, watch out for that. Isn't uh, there always? Oh, yeah. Always. Uh... And I guess our final, our final story for the burr, night. Burr, burr. What Epic. the fuck is that supposed to be on the desk? That's a mouse, I guess. Maybe that is a thick mouse, man. Oh, uh, oh, you mean on like on the far side there, like that angular looking thing? No, no, on the right side. Like, damn it, it didn't scroll. Uh, the yeah, okay to, to like the right a, of the keyboard here, the the mouse yeah. that looks like almost a sphere. Yes, that 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 is that is a chunky mouse. Yes, for sure. Um, yeah, this is from uh, Game is Hard. The links to all this stuff is in our show notes. You can look at those later. In the, in the ongoing legal battle between Epic v. Google, uh, Epic has revealed that their Epic Game Store has failed to generate profit. They say that profitability is not really their main concern. They just wanted to grow. And, uh, gr- I mean, gr- grow they didn't do. It, was, it wasn't as impressive as they would have hoped. And yeah, and they're, they're, they're going on to say that a lot of the financial difficulties they ha- are experiencing are due to just giving games away to people. Everyone else looking from the outside is like, w- duh, obviously. Because, like, yeah, if you're going to be a loss leader, you still need to be able to muscle your, co- your competition out of business. And, you know, Valve is this tiny little mom and pop shop, so it should have just happened by now, right? Like, Epic should have just steamrolled them, absolutely. Um... But yeah, um, the 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 uh, their uh, their their plans of like trying to get people into the Epic Game Store uh, infrastructure by giving away free games really only succeeded in making people sign up for an account to get free games because no one is really buying no one is really buying them on Epic unless they're within the exclusivity period, and even then, most people are just waiting for it to get to Steam because you know why why would I why would I buy things on the Epic Game Store? They just got a shopping cart. I mean, because I gave you a free game. Yeah. Hey, where are you going? Come back. Come back. Yeah. Thanks. I appreciate it. Oh, uh-huh. I thought it was going to transfer into uh, sales. Install, install Fortnite, bro. Wait, mm. I can't because I'm on Linux. All right. Well, here, here, here's another free game. Uh-huh. Sweet. And I, I gave you buy something. No? Uh-huh. No. I tried, Sorry. man. I don't know my business model. I don't know. We're not wrong. It's the customers that are wrong. 1,180 days is how long this took to get to trial. All I'll say is, um, damn. The Epic Store not making a profit. And you know what? This is by design, at least according to Epic, you know, on trial. They're just burning the money to make that growth. And as we've seen, as they just admitted, hasn't materialized. And they did, you know, in their grand plan, their master design. 2023 was supposed to be the year. And giving away all these free games paid off and started breaking even but it has not materialized either so uh yeah i mean i'm glad that we're getting this little bit of information these little morsels of like painfully obvious things that i think anybody could have sussed out anyway but again like after the apple case this google case is like hell a week because sideloading on androids yeah, is like th- th- there's there's nowhere near the drama either it's not like yeah Tim Sweeney's been there every day, though, and he's like, I'm going to get him, man, because that's how Tim Sweeney talks. That's how he is, yeah. Get you, man. Uh, You know, at this point, Epic, at this point, see, you you can't, you're you're making us pick two villains here. It's hard to, there's no good guy to root for, you know, and and you're trying to, like, 
position. Well, there, there were marketing attempts to position Epic as a good guy. I'm like, ain't nobody buying that, man. Come on. Perhaps. Maybe you just bite that bullet and make your own Steam Deck at home with hookers and blow. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. I, th- I, I genuinely think like if Epic really wants to like push their store forward, they got to start aggressively attempting to partner with guys like Acer and Lenovo and Ambernick that are like making these handhelds because they don't have enough resources, resources or support to make their own hardware that people would actually buy. Go back but, you and know, partner some, with people like Falcon Northwest, partner with Dell, partner with all the other hardware vendors that Valve dicked over with the original steam machines. Cause you know what? They probably want to grind an ax against yeah. Valve. They'd be like, yeah, spite, yeah. spite motivated purchases. Right. Absolutely. But yeah, like adding, adding some free games or something or some bonus Fortnite soda to a death deck competitor could be, could be the move, right? Like you're, you got to give something, uh, you, you got to provide an actual incentive for purchasing games, not just, Hey, if, if I go to, a, if I go to a bagel shop and they give me a bagel, I'm going to eat it and walk away. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to go buy more bagels. At some point, um, here's the other problem, though. At some point, you're going to get tired of getting bagel. Yeah, m- because maybe, yeah, maybe I'm going to, I want a baguette or I want, I want some color. Well, think about it. It's not like the um, Epic has stopped giving away a free game every week. And when it first launched, I'm like, okay, I'll create an Epic account. And maybe for the first week, second week, maybe even for that first month, maybe for that second month, maybe even for that first year. I have no idea what's free on Epic, right? I don't go check it. I don't care. I'm like, I, I, I'm, I'm full of bagel, man. I'm like, whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh, and they get a lot of like bad will. I mean, me personally, we were talking about that. <laughs> you just go back and listen to the pre pre show because uh, we cover a lot of stuff, but Epic pulling stuff off Steam. Mm-hmm. That is for nobody's benefit other than Epic. And it has Ex- fucked up games. Yeah, we were oh. talking about... Um, not Fall Guys, Stumble Buddies or Stumble Guys. Mm-hmm. About why is that on Steam and why are so many people, why is it making so much money that they can partner with Hot Wheels and Monopoly? Why? Because it's on Steam. You know, you pull something off of Steam to put it to get your exclusivity. The games die. Rocket League, Life Support, mm-hmm. Fall Guys. I'm sure some people are still playing it, but like it, it's nothing like it used to be, man. Like you, Fall Guys was like Twitch everywhere. Same way with Rocket League. Yeah, I'm just being grumpy about it, man. Like, uh, like pulling stuff away to like, mm, I, I I don't have a lot of love for Epic. It's, it's it's that artificial scarcity stuff, right? Like in in an era where everything is digital and there's it, it's no, like, doing that and trying to tell me you're doing it for my own good. Yeah, it's yeah, it's for your own goodness and. We're, 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 we're helping you out by letting you give us money on your iPhone without having to give Apple a cut. It's really for you. And dragging yeah. ass on EAC support for so long. Oh, man. Yeah. I, 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 don't, I don't know how much of that was like internal politics versus like just technical, technical trying to figure it out. Because like it, 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 it is a bit of a it is a bit of a, a bit of a KG situation to like do anti cheat in wine. Mm hmm. But like, yeah, they, 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 they could have, they could have been a lot more clear with method messaging. They could have been a lot more public about the stuff and like, I guess more, 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 more giving, more charismatic. Yeah. I mean, pretend anti-cheat like EAC is, uh, I don't know, man, like whatever. It works now. So at least, at least there's that. Yeah. We don't have to think about it too much. Um, did we ever get any titles that, uh, with like battle net working? Uh, what? It's just Diablo that's on Steam right now. Sure. I think or was it? No, it was. Uh, it was for, uh, Overwatch. Overwatch was the one they brought to Steam. Does Overwatch use Battle.net? Yes. Any oh. any 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 Blizzard games use Battle.net? Battle. Okay. Overwatch uh, does run. Yeah, launched it. As okay, I was then. so clearly asked, Ben, what were you doing? But it's like I just launched it and moved around in the hangar at the beginning to see if it run. We're good. Uh, I, I, I guess at least that works. They're not, they're not banning people yet, but soon. Hey, it's, if you want to tell us your favorite game to play once right at the beginning, just to see if it runs on your system, head over to linuxteamcast.com, hit the contact button, read the moon glyphs, and uh, make sure you're not trying to be spammy or our spam columns is going to nope you. I just re up their uh, yearly subscription to the service. We pay for that. And uh, Golem is the service. We will be in 
touch. We get a couple of shows we do. Pick the right one. This is LJC Weekly. Or if you want to come on the show, you got an open source project that you're working on, um, closed source, your game dev, and you're like, hey, you want some of that free publicity? Publicity? Publicity. Probably blah. We can help you. Publicity be. Yeah. Hey, man, I'm all down for like helping indie game devs. I'm like, hey, yeah. we, can, we can put some money, like at least one person will at least think about buying your game after watching the show. Plus, it's always fun to talk to the devs. They always have, like, interesting stories. It's good. Like, um, if you're in marketing and you know the devs, then you can put them on the show. That's cool. Yeah. We have no interest yeah, in we, talking we, with them. We, we want the tech people. We don't yeah. want the, the, the PR people. Yeah. Okay. What about right, this well, week? We, we, got, we got some hate mail from uh, Albright. Not necessarily Madeline Albright, although if she watches the show, are you still alive or are you a ghost? I don't know. Um, and they're asking about the worst. Why does it matter what Linux distribution I use for gaming? The only thing I notice affecting me is the desktop. I've read a lot of articles comparing distros, but they all say they do everything, including gaming. Is there a worse distribution for gaming? Uh, yeah, I think the worst distribution for gaming is probably like a very, very, very early version of Slackware that you can get booting on a system because it's not going to have any of the drivers that you need. Um, yeah, on, honestly, like for the most part, yeah, it's going to be the the desktop and all the other software that you're running, which I guess you could consider the distribution, but considering most distributions are just the desktop and the same software. Yeah, it's it's, it's kind of a bit of a mood point. You can make arguments about like, the default settings or specific versions of things that are being included that might make one distribution a better option than say another. But yeah, for the most part, like it's going to be very minimal impact if, if any, right. Opens up to a bunch of different questions. That's why I wanted to throw it in uh, outside of like, man, good on you for powering through that first sentence. Uh, worst distribution outside of Cali. Outside no, no, of but, I'm, but I'm a hacker. I, I need to use the, the hacker Linux. That is, uh, dude, genuinely typed in chat last night when we were doing Track Mania. Come hang out with us and play Track Mania. It's awesome. Um, all the information's on the web zone. It was like, hey, you guys are playing on Linux. I'm like, yeah. Like, how do I install it? I'm like, use it on Steam Proton. They're like, oh, I have it on GOG or whatever. And I'm like, oh, just use Lutris or Heroic. And they're like, cool, man. I'm using Kali, by the way. And I'm like, all right, never mind. Go away. Because that is signaling like, I don't want to give you a hard time because, but you are publicly, when you say, you are like, it's said like it's some type of hum, hum, uh, humble brag, but you're communicating that you know precisely, fuck all, and you're using Kali as a desktop. Yeah, that, but let's be real. Kali is a live environment. Yeah. You can install it on a system if you are like a pen tester and like that is your work laptop and that is like the only thing you use it for. Mm -hmm. But yeah, like. Uh, general, generally you want to like be able to boot it on any system because there's a lot of local cracking tools that are very useless if you just install it on your regular desktop system. Yeah. Uh, man, no hate. Absolutely worst distribution. One thing I hear often is you can't play games or video games on Debian stable. That's not true. Uh, dude, that doesn't stop people from typing it. You're like, Hey, well, I'm using Debian for what I haven't like, you should run Arch. It play the game or you should use, what is it? Nobra? No, Nobara, yeah. Yeah. And shit like that. I'm like, dude, like Debian 12 is new enough to where you can play any of your games. Which you're running through everything through Proton anyway. Yeah. M m much love to Eggy, but like, yeah, I, I, I don't think I would recommend Nobara to most people. It's, it's, it's a fun enthusiast distro, but again, you're putting all your eggs in that one <laughs> eggs in one ah, basket. I, ah, I didn't even think about that. Oh, oh, he's going to hate me now. I'm just going to fucking punch me in the face. Great. Oh, man. Uh, yeah. We've seen a couple of here, like Debian 1, Red Hat. I mean, a bunch of joke stuff, you know, like Poppy Linux. I, Damn I Linux. think if I'm yeah. decrypting the uh, initial sentence correctly, yeah, distros are all samey now. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Run something that was released in like the last year and you'll be fine. It will be fun. And it's not just gaming. This applies to audio and production like they're, they're the need for having a customized spin for a thing those days don't really that situation's not really there anymore it's just kind of legacy stuff 
you know, the perception of like, oh, I need to download Ubuntu Studio to do the multi you know, you yeah, do that I, with Fedora I, I, out of the box or Debian out of the box. I, I think it, I think it's also like an artifact of like the Linux is impossible to use type thing where it's like, oh, you're going to have to like go into the command line, blah, 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 to just install eight Linuxes. And it's like, no, no, like maybe once upon a time, your choice of distro had a more significant effect on your gaming performance. But mm-hmm. these days, no. Moral of the story is just use Gentoo. Yeah. yeah. Build it from LFS. Build it from scratch. Be a real man. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. I, I think that's all we got for this one, man. Uh, hey, if you like what we do. Oh, speaking of, well, I need to give a quick shout out to our latest patron. Oh, who? Who died? Uh, Barco. Barco? Yeah. Barco's like, man, I'm going to go over to LinuxTeamCast.com. I'm going to smash that support button. I'm going to click the Patreon button because we got Patreon, we got LibrePay, we got PayPal, one-time donations recurring. Now, as a patron, you get a gang of bonus features because we really do appreciate it if you can join us there, up to and including access to our super secret Discord that we're hanging out in the other six days of the week. We also got Amazon wish list. Jordan has one. Jill has one. Pedro has one. I got one in the studio. I don't even write your name and very hard to do chalk in the background if you pick up something there. We got a merch store, Amazon storefront, and of course, our humble affiliate. And your name's going to be in the credits, Barco. Thank you. You were saying, Jordan, as I was oh, saying. I was just going to say, like, I had to prune a bunch of uh, AMD cards off of my uh, wish list. Now, now, now I don't need them anymore. I also want to have second breakfast. I have second 7800 XD. Yes, yeah. Crossfire works with Vulcan out of the box. You can Crossfire's just- not supported anymore. Well, uh, multi GPU Vulcan, whatever the fuck. It's, yeah, uh, I, I, I I call it Crossfire. You can In dream. my heart, it's Crossfire. With your uh, one by sixteen and one by what eight? Yeah. Oh yeah. No, but well, well, that was the thing. Crossfire can use um different GPUs too. So that was, that was the whole. Remember all that nonsense, man. Oh what, yeah. Remember the company that was like, man, we've whatever happened to that? Because they disappeared. Remember the company that was like, you can use different GPUs from different vendors. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Remember that? I could have an NVIDIA and, like, we, we can leverage compute across all these. Like, somebody bought them and disappeared their ass. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I, I bet you it probably rhymes with NVIDIA. <laughs> that would have been bad. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, on that bombshell, let's call it a night and pour one out for old Pedro Mateus, who's still Mateus. currently deceased with no internet access, and that does truly suck. I always got feels. Internet being out sucks. But if you want to get a hold of me, I'm at Vinstone. Yeah, Vinstone on Zitter. Doing that, we got a federated timeline. Mass.linuxteamcast.com. I'm just at Vin there. All my social media stuff is on our web zone. And um, here on Twitter, of course, I'm in Discord. I'm in our IRC. And uh, all those places where your regular uh, friendly neighborhood Vinstones can be located. Uh, much like a bagpipe, I make the sounds of a sheep's gut being pumped full of I'm air. I'm not seeing you a bagpipe on this wish list, Tommy. If you oh, give me, give me a minute. If All right, you, I know I'll, Amazon I'll, I'll sells them. After the people follow me on Twitter <laughs> at the Burning Fool or at Frojo at mass.lexgamecast.com. And Pedro's dead. Womp womp. All right. Yeah, Pe- Pedro died. Yeah. And then there's Pedro. Hey, <laughs> sec. How about some credits? Olito Vision. At least oh. it's not a West revision. Well, we got to thank the people flying through space that make this possible every week. The names and the credits, the names in history, like Omega, Sartharin, and our executive producers, Exec Barbara, producers, like Scott David, Michaud, uh, Nisha, uh, Tom Cass, Mike G, Drummer, Tomas, Hakim, David, Eship, all of Chicago, fans, the entire population, Sudesto, empty, like Gloria Sagroll, Nubit, no, 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 Nubit, Man, Ogi, Joe, Rilo. Plenty of death notes. Let's see, we got Gamatron, Pebble, Xanthorus. Barco's there. Pipper. And Barco! Look at these little chairlings like Mr. Alert and Dordor Geek and Jonas and Michael and Ryan and Dementor and Belric. But and they, they joined together Yatko to perform co chair. Yes. Rick and these fuckers. The people on the on the wall. The Thanks writings on the, the wall. Read there when they wrote on the wall. Yeah, you know, D- Dancing Joe, Kaijure, Remekta, John, Noctilus, Aldius, all those guys. Great, great fuckers. Did we learn anything this week? Uh, no. My I brain is you, empty. I dare you to say that to the llama. Llama, my brain is empty. Don't hurt me. 
can kind of see his fangs. <laughs> Bad fire, everyone. See you next week. Five dudes. <laughs>